Well, we welcome you again to our study of the book of Revelation, and we're looking at the vision John had in Revelation chapter 1 of Jesus in the midst of the church. We saw in Revelation 1.20 that the symbolism is seven golden candlesticks or uh, lampstands, and these lampstands are symbolic of the church. So he's got a vision now of Jesus in the church. And you know what? Before we get a vision of Jesus coming again, I think we need a vision of Jesus in our midst. Jesus here with us now. And he's describing him in, in verse 13. And in the midst of the seven lampstands, one like the Son of Man, clothed with a great garment down to the feet and girt about with a chest with a golden band. And his head and hairs were white like wool, as white as snow, and his eyes like the flame of fire. His eyes like the flame of fire. His feet were like fine brass as it is refined in the furnace, and his voice like the sound of many waters. Well, today we're going to look at those eyes that are a flame of fire, and they symbolize that Jesus is the searcher of men's hearts. Jesus Christ is the one that knows the heart of every man. We don't even really know our own heart, Jeremiah 17, 9 and 10, but the Lord sees the heart, and the Lord tries the reins. In Jeremiah 23, 24, we talk about we can't hide uh, from the Lord. He fills heaven and He fills the earth. And Hebrews chapter 4, verses 12 and 13 says, The Word of God is like this two-edged sword, and it is a discerner of the thoughts and the intents of the heart. And neither is there any creature that is not manifest in His sight. All things are as naked and open to the eyes of Him. And so He sees our hearts. He knows exactly what's going on in us. His eyes are like eyes of fire piercing down into us. Well, and that's why you can go to church and say, well, I think the preacher was preaching right at me. Well, it wasn't the preacher. He didn't know about it. It was the Spirit of God because Jesus is in the midst of the church. And oh, how different church will be when we have an unveiling of Jesus in the church. Why should we pray in the Spirit, by the way? Because Romans chapter 8, verses 26 and 27 talk about the Spirit praying through us, but also that He knows the mind of the Lord, and He knows what's in the heart of man, and He knows the will of God. So by partnering with the Holy Spirit in prayer, this is powerful. But the Lord is in the midst of the church with eyes of fire. And we've already seen He is that all-wise counselor. We can go to Him for counsel. He's the judge. He's got those judge's robes and garments on. But notice also, it says in verse 15, His feet were like fine brass as it is refined in a furnace. Well, this is, this is so important because if you see Jesus as the judge and as the one who searches our hearts, we also need to see Him as the one with feet of brass. And what does that mean? Well, brass in the Scripture always symbolizes the place where sin has been judged. In the tabernacle, the altar was to be covered not with gold like other things, but with brass. Exodus 27, 1 through 8, and Exodus 29, 36 through 40. Uh, in the wilderness, when Moses held up that serpent that would relieve the plague, uh, if all who looked on it in faith, what was it made of? It was made of brass. Numbers 21, 9. And that's referred to in John 3, 14 through 19, as Moses held up the brass serpent. And Jesus' feet are of brass, meaning that's where the, the sins were brought into judgment and dealt with. They've already been judged in Christ. Notice in, in the first uh, uh, gospel, it's called the pro Angelion, which means before the gospel, the first gospel, like the prototype of the gospel, is in Genesis 13, 15, and it talks about the heel of the seed of the woman will smash Satan's head. And in Romans 16, 20, the God of peace will crush Satan under your feet shortly. So feet and brass, what does that symbolize? Well, here's the good news. The judge is in our midst, and the one who tries our hearts and knows our hearts is in our midst. But he's also the wise counselor if we come to him. But he's also the one that has already paid the price for our sins. So again, I said it earlier, he's not there to condemn us. He's there to free us. 
He's there to say, I know the sins that are in your life, but you need to know that I have already paid the price for those sins. My love and my blood will set you free from those sins. And my wise counsel can teach you how to live above those sins. So again, it's victory in Jesus. There is now no condemnation to those that are in Christ. Romans chapter 8. And notice it says, he also has uh, his face, his voice is like the sound of many, many waters. And his face, his countenance, was like the sun shining in all of its strength. Oh, the word of the Lord goes forth like thunder into our souls at times. The awesome power of the word of God is hinted at here. His, his voice, it says, and the, out of his mouth went a sharp two-edged sword. And his voice was like the sound of many waters. In other words, the voice of the Lord is powerful. And it's like a sword. It can defeat the enemy. But notice the glory is being manifest. His face is shining in verse 16 like the sun. Remember the Mount of Transfiguration? How his face just was shining in, in, in all of its splendor and in all of its glory. And Jesus is being, has now been restored to his glory. John 17, 5. And the Son of Righteousness will come with healing in his wings. And that's the, 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 the picture of the brilliant one. The Son coming with healing in his wings. The Bible says in Revelation 21, later on we'll study this, 22 through 25 of this great city. We'll get into what that means when we get there. But it says there, there's no need of the sun because the glory of God will be the light of it. Do you see Jesus Christ in the midst of the church as the judge and the counselor? And, and, and he is the one who has taken the judgment for our sins. And his word is powerful. He's the one who looses us and frees us. And oh, how he wants to manifest his glory in the church. The book of Revelation is not just a revealing of Jesus coming in judgment to the world. The book of Revelation is also a revelation of who Jesus is in our midst. Now, the book of Revelation was written to, to Christians who were suffering. So I want you to see the next part of this vision in verse 17. And when I saw him, I fell at his feet as dead, but he laid his right hand on me, saying to me, Do not be afraid. I am the first and the last. I am he who lives and was a corpse. And behold, I am alive forevermore. Amen. And I have the keys of Hades and death. Here's what he's saying. You're going to be persecuted. There, there's going to be trial. There's going to be thalipsis. But don't be afraid. I've been through it. Don't be afraid. And because I have been through it, I have conquered it. And you don't need to be afraid of it. Just like I was a corpse and came alive again, even if you give your life in martyrdom, there's life after that. There's greater life after that. Do not be afraid. Now, let's look at Jesus interpreting part of this vision for us. Now, the reaction of John, he falls as dead. But notice how Jesus responds. He laid his hand on him. That's verse 17. You know, when you don't have the strength to go on, he'll lay his hand on you. Always remember that. When you don't have the strength, when, when you think you cannot face anymore, understand this, he'll lay his hand on you. And he'll show you who he is. Real victory in life is not finding out who we are, it's finding out who he is. And he says, don't be afraid. And then he laid his hand on him. And, 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 he, and he gave this great declaration of himself. And verse 19 is the commission to write the things which you've seen, the, the things which are, the things which will take place here after this. And then verse 20, And the mystery of the seven stars which you saw in my right hand, in my right hand, and the seven golden lampstands, the seven stars are the angels of the seven churches, and the seven lampstands which you saw are the seven churches, so the leaders of the church and the church, here's what I want you to understand. Here's victory. They're in his hands. You're, you're, you're not just being tossed to the wind. You're not just on your own. They're in his hands. And so we see, uh, this is supernatural now. It doesn't even make logical sense. Because now we see the candlesticks and there's one in the midst of them. And then he turns around and says, but they're in my hands. And what is he trying to say? He's trying to say, I'm the one that holds you. I'm the one that will carry you through, no matter what the world does, no matter what happens. I'm in your midst as a church, and I'm in your midst as an individual, and I hold you. 
and I will carry you through John chapter 10 verse 27 through 30 he, he says that, that he and his father are one and he talks about holding us in his hand and no man will pluck us from his hands there is the security of the saint there is our ability to endure the tribulation that might come is that we are held in his hands Deuteronomy 33 27 says the eternal God is your refuge and underneath are the everlasting arms and he will drive out the enemy from before you and destroy them and that's even more true in the book of Revelation so here we have it the first vision John is in the spirit on the Lord's day and he hears a mighty sound behind him and he turns to see what that sound is and he sees seven golden lampstands and one like the son of man in the midst of those seven lampstands he's dressed as a judge and yet he's the all-wise counselor his eyes are flames looking deep within every one of us his word is powerful like thunder like sound of many waters like a sword but he's already dealt with our sin his feet of brass and he says I hold you I'm the one who was then I became a corpse, and now I'm alive forevermore. And I have the keys. I have the authority over death and the grave. I have the authority. And I'm the one who holds you. Are you aware right now that you are in His hands? Don't let this book of Revelation be an academic pursuit. Apply it to your own life. You are a part of the church. So you join a local church and be faithful to a local church because He's in the midst of that church. But He's also in your heart. He says, I'll hold you. If you need counsel, that's who I am, the counselor. If you need your sins to have been forgiven, I've already done that, my feet are brass. My word is powerful, it's alive, and I hold you. Well, we're gonna get into the seven letters in our next lesson, but know this, the church is the church because Jesus is in our midst. For from you 